thanks for dropping by. Today's video is about Fusion's use of caching footage for increased playback and rendering performance. The first type of cache is RAM cache. RAM cache is where you see the green bar in the timeline. And once we've played all that way through, we can see that this has been cached. This shows you the selected node of what is cached. Everything now downstream will be cached into uh, RAM. Fusion alters the cache priority of a tool based on a few factors, being whether or not the tool is currently viewed in the display. Second is the length of the time a tool takes to render. The longer it takes to render, the higher the cache priority. We can manually alter the cache priority of a tool by right clicking on it, choosing modes and force cache. This effectively sets the node at the highest cache priority. The amount of available RAM to Fusion can be set under Preferences, System, Memory and GPU. This slider allows you to specify a percentage of your physical RAM for use in caching. Keep in mind that the amount of RAM available on your machine and the RAM required to render a given image may not allow you to cache everything you want. You can also purge your cache by coming down to the RAM meter, right clicking and selecting Purge Cache. The second type of cache is disk cache. We can use this method to speed up specific branches of your composition or simply to reduce the draw of footage across the network. To enable disk cache, just right click on a node and select cache to disk. The path by default is your temporary path. You can select this and pick a different path and you get options of changing the format. But I recommend you keep it in the Fusion RAW format. And this is because it's going to ensure that the proxy settings, DOD and color depth are maintained. The next few checkboxes allow you to lock the branch of tools upstream of the cached node to prevent invalidation of the cache, as well as the cached files to prevent deletion of the files on closing the comp. Next, we have the use network, which will submit the comp to your network for rendering of the cache to your local disk. Lastly, there is the delete cache and pre-render buttons. Selecting the pre-render button will render the current render range to disk, either locally or over the farm if you have the use network checked. If you wish your local workstation to fill the cache on the disk as you work, you can choose the OK button. If your comp is quite complex and your computer is struggling, what you can do is use a saver node. I'm going to click somewhere in here and I'm going to press the shift and space bar and type saver and that brings in a saver node. Now at any point in this composition, I can pull to this saver node. This composition isn't that big, so I'm actually going to pull it from the time speed here. In the saver, in the inspector, I can select somewhere on my computer to store the actual cache. So I'm just going to type in here, make a folder, call it Fusion Cache, and then I'm going to save this out. So this is the actual path, and now I come to Fusion, Render All Savers. And this is going to render the downstream nodes to my file system. We've now rendered everything downstream to disk. And what we can do is at this point, we can now bring in a loader node, connect the loader node up to our upstream, and then we can browse to where we had the Fusion Cache. Just take the first one. What it's done, it's taken everything from here, rendered it to the saver, and now we're bringing it back in the loader. And what we can now do is we can now start to work here. So for example, if we wanted to bring this into 3D, and we wanted to put it on an image plane, we can do that and it's taken all the pressure off the computer. We can work with a complex node tree. We can have many, many savers and then bring them back in. We're taking all the pressure off the computer. I hope you find that helpful. If you do, please like and subscribe. Maybe drop a comment. And thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you next time.